Good morning, friends. My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and I am so glad um, for our us to gather our hearts and our minds together. Um, welcome to those of you who join us on a regular basis. We're here Monday uh, through Thursday at 8:30 in the mornings, uh, and we and those of you who are joining us uh, by watching video later uh, or here on the Facebook page or on YouTube. Uh, we are so glad um, that you are a part of uh, this little band of folks as well. So again, welcome. We hope that there is joy and peace uh, with you and in you, wherever you may be today. Um, so as our folks are gathering around, I just want to offer um, a word. Now there's the risk of doing this inside. I miss being out at my table, but it's a little bit chilly. So pardon the phone. I don't know how to put it on silent here at the office. So um, what we do is we gather our hearts and our minds around a particular verse or passage in scripture that we might be clear about uh, whose we are as well as who we are and that we might uh, understand and be more um, available to uh, the presence of God around us. It's as simple as that. Uh, a couple of things that I want to share with you um, before we go to the uh, verse in Hebrews that I want us to look at today. Um, if you uh, don't have um, an Advent practice um, for you personally or for your family, we have found um, a, a resource uh, here at Cook's that we're making available. We can send you the PDF so that you can download it yourself at no cost. Uh, or if you're in the area and you want to swing by, if you'll let us know uh, you're outside, we'll bring one to your car. Um, uh, and so that there are lections or passages for you to read and questions to help prompt your thinking every day of Advent. Now, I know that we started on Sunday, so we're a few days behind, but there's um, nothing like finding order in our day and making room uh, for Jesus there. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, we hope that you'll reach out and let us know. Uh, you can put your comments there or send us a direct message or contact the church office or one of us here, Sandra or Monica, and we'll uh, make sure that you get that. So, uh, and I can't, who can believe it's December the 2nd? Oh, in a year where every day has felt so much like the same as the one before it and the one before that. Um, we have also experienced um, a lot of whiplash. It's things are changing again and what I'm supposed to think or believe or how I'm supposed to practice uh, living. Um, that's why we need an anchor, my friends. And so you guessed it, that's the verse uh, that I want us to look at today. Hebrews six nineteen is the promise of that anchor that holds us. Uh, and many of you may have this verse written on your heart. If you're uh, not, um, haven't tried your hand at that, trying to memorize scripture and hold it in, I wanna I give you an encouragement to do that, but I also want to give you an out. Uh, not to not do it, but uh, to not worry about every little jot and tittle. Now, we, we don't want to add to Scripture, but uh, it, there are so many translations that how mine reads, uh, if I'm reading out of common Engl the Common English translation today, might read a little bit different than yours. So don't get all worked up about uh, every word not being exactly in the right place. For the truth uh, to be within us, for the, for the truth to take root, uh, as a seed planted in good soil, um, the truth is what's so important. So don't worry about the periods and the commas and verse numbers and all of that. If you hear a truth that really resonates with you and changes your perspective, hang on to it. That's all we're doing. Okay, so Hebrews 619, I said, already mentions an anchor. Uh, before we read the verse, I want you to hear a little bit. Maybe uh, you were uh, you're new to this, like I was, and so I actually looked up like the parts of an anchor and to be clear about exactly how it works. And so, um, if you'll imagine kind of the rounded or uh, sculpted bottom of an anchor, uh, the very lowest point is called the crown. 
um, and from the crown, arms stick up, and the little uh, thingamajigs on the end are called flukes. I have to say, it, it makes me wonder the things that we call a fluke, um, like referring to a happening or, um, it, well, you get where I'm going, uh, whether we got that from a fluke, something that just kind of grabs our attention. It's important for us to understand those parts of the anchor because the way an anchor works is it doesn't just sit on the seabed as a heavy something that keeps a boat from dragging or moving from place. Um, those uh, flukes actually grab into the seabed and so it adds another level of resistance. So you not only have the weight of the anchor and the chain that holds it to the boat, but you also have those flukes that grab on um, to whatever material uh, makes up the seabed. Uh, you got a little uh, seaweed action or coral action going on. Those flukes really hang on. Um, and then there's a third level of resistance when the boat does kind of drift or the wind might try to push it. There's an extra resistance against that strong metal anchor or that strong heavy anchor because of the way the fluke supported by the arms and the crown are able to um, kind of attach itself to the seabed. So here we go into the verse to understand what it means for us to have a hope that is an anchor. This hope, okay, now that's a reference to verse 18. Jesus is known as our great high priest, uh, and it, he is the hope uh, and all that he has done for us as the forerunner of all of us. Um, that refuge we find in God, trusting in the efficacy of Jesus the Christ, his life, his work, his death, his life again. That is our hope, my friends. So this hope, which is a safe and secure anchor for our whole being, enters the sanctuary behind the curtain okay so now verse 19 is not a really a complete thought uh, verse 20 goes on to say behind that curtain where jesus a forerunner on our behalf has entered uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, what we mean uh, by uh, this hope is uh, remember in both the hebrew and greek culture uh, the uh, originators of the languages of the Old and the New Testament, uh, hope was not just a wishful thinking. Uh, it really is an expectant, uh, uh, an expectant vigilance. I, I, I'm waiting because I know this is going to happen sometime. Uh, think about uh, kid, when we were uh, all in person for school. Think about the the way the kids watch the sky when uh, a snowflake has appeared on the um, on the weather person's uh, little forecast board, and they know tomorrow is a school day. Y'all, that that is hope. That's not just wishful thinking. That is hope. They are watching the skies and uh, trusting that it will happen. They even have, so I'm told rituals that they go through to be able to uh, make sure that that happens well so this um, hope that we have in Jesus an expectant waiting because God is trustworthy that hope is a safe and secure anchor so let's talk about those words safe and secure we think we know what those mean um, but safe uh, here is described I'm not uh, I am safe. We think about it this way. I feel safe. I am safe. I'm protected. Um, I am cared for. Uh, it's the opposite of being in danger, so I'm not in danger when I am in this uh, person's presence or when I am in this predicament. But for Jesus to be a safe anchor, a a fair definition of safe there is unfailing. Jesus is unfailing. God in Christ is absolutely reliable and trustworthy. I am safe with 
God. Do you see how we can call that anchor a safe anchor because it protects me? It keeps me from uh, wandering, uh, floating off, uh, not being powerful enough against the resistances that come against me. And the same is true for secure. I feel secure because God in Jesus is firm, absolutely certain, enduring, solid. Um, and there is a reference to often when this word secure uh, is used, sometimes it's translated as steadfast um, in uh, less modern translations. It really is referring um, to ground that is stable enough, strong enough, solid enough for us to walk on. And so this hope that we have in Jesus is a safe and secure anchor. An anchor um, is, uh, so literally, if we're thinking about anchor, with the crown and the arms and the fluke, um, ancient uh, anchors look just like the ones we have uh, today, for the most part. But figuratively, when we refer to a person as an anchor, or to a truth as an anchor, what we mean is it's a stay or a kind of a safeguard, a stronghold for us. The way the anchor works is trustworthy. So I want to encourage you to think today about how Jesus, how your hope because of Jesus is that stay for you. It keeps you uh, in place when the winds come against you when the seas begin to rise um, I just had this thought uh, one of the most love uh, one of the loveliest truths I think that have come out for us in this uh, difficult difficult season of uh, health pandemic but also the recognition of inequality and the way some folks are ignored or left behind um, an awareness that we are an awareness that we are all in the same storm but we are not all in the same boat when we have a secure anchor when we know this hope we have in Jesus the Christ is our stay is our safeguard then we can trust no matter what the storm is like and no matter what our boat is like so I want you to think today about how it is that you are held steady because of the hope you have. Uh, it's not because of your great mind, but it is, in the, um, it, it is in the nature and the character of who Jesus is. And that anchor is for our whole being. Now, this is where I love um, a different translation. Uh, I, yours might even say, uh, and it's an anchor for our soul. I love using the word soul there, and it's, a, it's fairly translated as whole being. But often when you and I think about whole being, we're thinking about head to toe. We're still think, thinking about the physical person. But the soul is um, a reference to the breath of life. Uh, our soul is the seat of or where uh, in our whole person um, the will or um, the truest self lives and it is the direct aftermath of God breathing divine breath and spirit into us. We are enlivened, not just our hearts are beating now, our lungs are drawing in air. We are alive with our own personality, our passions, um, what we love, uh, what brings us joy, uh, even beyond just now personality, but the very core, the essence of who we are is because God has given us God's own life. And that anchor, our hope in Jesus, is what secures our whole being, our soul. We are steadfast and we are unshakable, not of our own doing, but because of this hope we have in Jesus. And I love this, uh, this uh, intimation as well. This hope, Jesus himself, enters the sanctuary behind the curtain. Do you understand that reference, my friends? If You have to kind of imagine the temple and how uh, Jews believed 
well, and for that matter, any religion, but particularly um, the Jewish faith as they um, honored the one true God. There was a, in the most special place where the altar was, um, where the whole, it was called the Holy of Holies. That's where the Ark was kept. That's where the uh, primary altar was. And that's, uh, th there were only allowed certain folks in, and that was the high priest that had duty um, at that particular time. And so there was great respect and honor offered. They believed, the ancient Jews believed that to enter the Holy of Holies wrongly or to behave wrongly, even if unintentional, in that place you could, you could die. It was a sign of disrespect or dishonor to God. And so nobody was allowed behind the Holy of Holies except the one who was designated. Uh, I'll give you a hint. There is an experience with the Holy of Holies and a priest who was on duty. That's a beautiful part of the Christmas message. Uh, and so extra cookies. I wish that were so. Uh, extra cookies for somebody who knows who that was. Y'all type that in if you uh, know who that was. Uh, and so the this hope that we have that is a sure foundation, an anchor for our souls, the very life that makes us who we are directly from God's own breath has been bold enough, is righteous enough to go into the Holy of Holies to make sacrifice on our behalf. That's what you did when you were in there. Sacrifice of incense, a sacrifice of grain, a sacrifice that meant expiation of our sins, a sacrifice that set us right with God. And Jesus, the one who is the hope, like an anchor for our souls, is the one who has made his way in on our behalf. He's gone behind the curtain. Another, um, Another a tidbit that I love so much about uh, what Jesus has done for us. Many of you uh, know um, the story of Jesus' last hours very, very well. And though it's represented mostly the same in all of the four Gospels, there are some variations there. And this is the part of the story that I relish. When Jesus drew his last breath, on the cross after saying, my God, why have, you have, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus breathed his last breath, the rocks shook, the earth shook, and the temple curtain, what separated the Holy of Holies from the place where it was safe for um, some to gather in the, in the temple, in the sanctuary, that curtain that divided that place and kept us out of the Holy of Holies was torn in two from the top to the bottom. We have this hope because one has entered the Holy of Holies to make sacrifice for us, to set us right with God once and for all. My prayer is that that is your hope. In this week that we focus on hope, the first week of Advent, my prayer is that you know this hope in Jesus that really is an anchor for your soul. Man, we're facing some tough winds, and many of us are battling storms that others know nothing about. But my friends, there is one who will keep you safe and secure, that anchor that is stronger than anything that could come against you. My prayer for all of those who hear the sound of my voice and many, many more is that you would claim that hope and trust it even when your circumstances and your mind would tell you, I don't know about this. Your hope is secure in Him. Let's pray together. Lord, I am so grateful for that steadfastness that you bring to our lives. It's not just that you enable our legs to be strong, for us to stand firm where we are, but you become the very foundation that is unshakable, sturdy enough to stand firm on. Your truth 
is that foundation. Your love and your mercy are that foundation. Your grace without measure uh, contributes to that foundation and the salvation that we know in Jesus the Christ, an absolute strong foundation. Give us the courage that we need, Lord, to trust in the hope we have in Jesus as our anchor. Through the storms we face right now, through the storms that we will face in the rest of our days, however they may come, may we remember that you are more powerful still. You are the one who holds the storm. You are the one who brings us peace and calm. You alone are our hope. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us, and we cling to that hope even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, Zachariah uh, is, the, is the person uh, who uh, had Holy of Holies duty, and, uh, and he, Zachariah, was married to Elizabeth, and they are parents to John the Baptist, a cousin of Jesus. Hmm. Once you check out that part of the story, you'll find his story in the Gospel of Luke, the very beginning. Enjoy. I'm so excited to have shared this part of my day with you. I will see you soon. Bye.